Well, it's already week 17 of the NFL season, last week of the regular season. The year has just flown by. It's been a fun year, and the best is yet to come. The next month, month and a half, playoffs and Super Bowl, it is great stuff. If you're an NFL fan like me, you're really looking forward to it. But first things first, let's see if we can't make a little bit of money this week. Time for our Week 17 picks. Three games that I like this week. Let's get right to it. The New Orleans Saints host the Carolina Panthers, their NFC South division rival. The Saints are currently installed as a 5.5 point favorite on BetDAC, 54 the total, and I do like New Orleans in this game. Like the way the Saints have been playing lately, winning on the road in Dallas last week, 41 to nothing the week before last, their last home game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, two or three weeks ago, my only question with this Saints team as it pertained to the last two or three games of the season was would they be motivated? This is a team that has been a contender the last two or three years, and when they were finally knocked out of playoff contention, I believe it was by the New York Giants there three weeks ago. I believe that was the game they were officially eliminated. You thought, well, they have nothing left to play for. There's been so much controversy swirling around this team all year. Obviously, Sean Payton, their head coach, has been suspended for the entire season. They had players suspended. We, we all know the bounty scandal. We don't have to rehash it. By the way, yesterday it was announced that Payton re-signed with the Saints. It, it was thought that Payton might move on after this season. There are rumors that he might be hired to coach Dallas Cowboys, but he is back in New Orleans, signed, signed a long-term contract extension. I think that's a good thing for the Saints organization. But anyway, they're going to be without him on Sunday. But they've showed the last couple of weeks that eh, motivation, not really a factor. This team, is they've put their best foot forward here lately. Obviously winning in Dallas last week, and it was desperation time for the Cowboys. They needed that game. So I don't think there's any reason to question New Orleans' motivation or want to in this game, especially because they're playing a division rival who beat them early in the year. You remember back in September, Panthers with a 35-27 to home win over the Saints. And the Panthers have been playing well enough lately, I think, to, to give the Saints a little bit of value here, to keep this line nice and reasonable at five and a half. Panthers have won four out of the last five. But you look, a little bit of, you look a little bit closer at these last five games. Three of their four wins have come against awful teams. Their one loss has been against the Kansas City Chiefs, the worst team in the NFL. So let's not confuse the Carolina Panthers with a good team. Even though they've been playing better this last month, no question about it, especially on the defensive side of the ball, I do not think they're going to be able to keep up with the Saints in the Superdome. Carolina, their defense has been impressive over the last month, but the offense still leaves something to be desired. They've been bottom half of the league all year in total offense. And even though Cam Newton has cut down on the, on the turnovers here over the last month, which has enabled them to win some games, they're still not playing great offensively. An ugly 17-6 win over the Oakland Raiders last week, only scoring 17 on that weak Oakland defense. Not impressive. Now, I expect them to score more than that this week. The Saints have a bad defense, as we all know. But like I said, I don't think they're going to be able to keep up with that Saints offense, which, as usual this year, prolific. Second in the NFL in pass yards. Third in the NFL in total yards per game. I think the Saints are going to get a feel-good win here, finish the season 8-8. Eight and eight. I like them minus 5.5 on Sunday against Carolina. The next game, Chicago going on the road to take on the Detroit Lions. The Bears installed as a three-point favorite on BetDAC. I like the underdog here. I'm going with Detroit in the upset. Now, I'm well aware that Detroit has been horrible this season, 4-11, one of the most disappointing teams in the entire NFL. I'm also aware of the fact Chicago desperately needs this game. If the Bears can beat Detroit, and Green Bay beats Minnesota, which they're favored to do, then the Bears would make the playoffs. I still don't think the Bears are going to be able to do it. I like Detroit plus three. As a matter of fact, I think Detroit on the money line, 242 is what Detroit can be had on the money line right now on BetDAC. I think that might be a good bet as well. Listen, the Chicago Bears, losers of five of their last seven, they are going in the wrong direction. Their defense has been playing much worse since Brian Urlacher left the lineup a few weeks ago with a hamstring injury. Urlacher's not going to play in this game as well. Their offense, which all year had relied on Matt Forte and Michael Bush, that great running back tandem. They'd been a top 10 rushing offense all season. Bush is out. He's been out for a couple of weeks. Forte, questionable for this game. He's got a gimpy ankle. Even if he plays, he's not going to be 100%. That means they're going to have to rely heavily on Jay Cutler, which I do not think is a good thing. Really, the Bears' formula for success through the first eight games of the season, remember they were 7-1 and one through eight games, was not relying too much on Jay Cutler. The Bears have been right at the bottom of the NFL all year in pass yards per game, currently 29th in pass yards per game. It's because they've been conservative on offense. Like I said, they've relied on the running back tandem of Matt Forte, Michael Bush, and 
They've been very successful doing that. When they've had to rely on Jay Cutler too much, it has not been a good thing. And this game, I think, is going to be one of those situations. The Lions can pass the ball. We all know that. First in the NFL and pass yards per game. So I think they're going to score some. And I think they're going to force Chicago to throw it more than they'd like to, especially since, like we talked about, Chicago has injuries at the running back position. Detroit, it's an excellent chance for them, I think, to... You don't want to say, because it's going to be a disappointing year no matter what, but certainly would be a feel-good way to, to end the year, to end a bad year at home against your division rival, ruining the Bears' playoff hopes, and I think they're going to do it. I, I like the Lions in this spot. I, you know, Some people, I know the public's been all over Chicago this week, and when you saw the Bears only open as a three-point favorite, that might have caught you by surprise. It caught me a surprise. I, I thought Chicago was going to be about a four- or four-and-a-half-point favorite in this game, but the more I looked at it, the more I've thought about it, I think the Detroit Lions are going to pull the upset. I do like Detroit plus three. I also like them on the money line at 242. My final game, final game I like on Sunday, the biggest game of Sunday without a question, the Sunday night game, Dallas at Washington. The Cowboys installed, excuse me, the Redskins installed as a three and a half point favorite on BetDAC. The winner of this game wins the NFC East. The loser will most likely miss the playoffs. I say most likely because if Washington loses, they could still have some things happen to where they would still make the playoffs. It would involve three other teams losing, but could happen. Anyway, these teams probably have to win to make the playoffs. With Dallas, it's without a doubt. If the Cowboys lose, they have missed the playoffs, win, and they won the NFC East. And you know what? I bet against Washington a lot this year. I think I'm 1-3 betting against the Washington Redskins. I guess I haven't learned my lesson. I like Dallas plus three and a half in this game. To me, it's quite simple here. Listen, a hundred times out of a hundred, in situations like this, must win big time games, prime time games, playoffs on the line, you give me the team with the better defense and the more experienced quarterback every single day of the week, and that's what we have here with the Dallas Cowboys. And the fact they're actually getting three and a half points is just gravy. It's just icing on the cake. Robert Griffin III, I know he's been great this year. He's a rookie. He's a rookie facing a good defense. Not a great defense in Dallas, but Cowboys have been a good, solid defense all year. Tony Romo has been there before. Romo has been playing really good football the last three or four weeks. The Redskins have a bad defense. I will take the experienced Tony Romo against that bad Washington defense over the rookie Robert Griffin against a better Dallas defense any day of the week. The three and a half points here just make it feel like a no-brainer to me. I think Dallas is going to win this game outright, and it's my favorite bet of the day, Dallas plus three and a half. I, you know, what, what more can I say? I, I know Washington beat Dallas on Thanksgiving night, got out to that big lead. I'm well aware of that. I know I've underestimated Washington all year long. Well aware of that also. Robert Griffin III, what else can you say about the guy? He's been extremely impressive. The Redskins, number one in the NFL in rush yards per game. I know it all. I, I understand the case that could be made for Washington here. But as I said, I'll take the experienced veteran quarterback and the better defense and the three and a half points. You can take your chances with Washington. I'm on Dallas plus three and a half. There you have it. Those are my three games for Sunday. I like New Orleans minus five and a half at home against Carolina. I like Detroit plus three at home against Chicago. And I like Dallas plus three and a half at home against the Washington Redskins. I wish you best of luck this week 17 Sunday, whatever you decide to do, just so long as your interests don't conflict with my interests.